Welcome to the part two. The university's business school is housed in a renovated prison, the once famous breakwater convict station just near the Victorian and Alfred waterfront. The initial building was constructed in the middle of the 19th century, with the current building replacing it in 1901. The construction of a new breakwater initiated in 1859 by Prince Albert, consort of the British monarch, was to occupy thousands of criminals from the breakwater prison for almost half a century. The prison was the British colony's largest convict station in the 19th century. It was also a segregated prison in which white convicts were housed in a different building, the Industrial Breakwater from 1901. Convict labour was at the origin of road building in the colony, for instance, as well as the construction of breakwaters at East London, Table Bay and Cowie between 1843 and 1900. The discovery of mineral wealth accompanied the control of government by local settlers in 1880s and 1890s, marking a turning point for the colony in prison. In terms of the prison disciplinary system, strict discipline did not take place in the early years until 1901, when things started changing. Three conduct classes existed, those of good conduct, those under probation, and those in the penal class. Although the industrial prison was only used as a convict station for 10 years, it represented the start of racial segregation between black and white prisoners in South Africa. The punishment records, housed at the archives in Ruland Street, are instructive. Some of the infringements for which prisoners were punished from 1856 to 1913 included having tobacco, which earned a prisoner three days of solitary confinement, wearing a fellow convict's shirt and provoking a breach of the peace was punished by nine days of solitary confinement, sharpening a spoon on a grindstone meant two days in solitary confinement, not sweeping under their bed could lead to indulgences stopped for 14 days, being in possession of a cigarette could mean two days on the treadmill. Even laziness was a crime and led to a day in solitary confinement. Simply having a deck of cards resulted in one day of solitary confinement. Some punishments were more severe, such as receiving 15 lashes for fighting with another convict or 15 cuts with a cane for striking and threatening convicts. The most common punishments were solitary confinement and indulgences taken away. The more severe punishments included lashes and a minimum of a day on the treadmill. The breakwater was a testing space for the penal system and practices that came about later on. The prison was used as a model for other convict stations at the time, too. The treadmill was built in 1880, a revolving staircase rotating when convicts took a step onto it. It was a non-productive punishment method used for laziness and jail offences. If the prisoners did not keep up the pace, the rotating planks would injure their shins. Prisoners could spend the entire day from 9 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon, continuously climbing these endless stairs, only being allowed 5 minutes breaks every half an hour. The treadmill still exists today in the upper parking area of the UCT Business School at the end of the row of isolation cells. These cells were another form of punishment in which prisoners were kept isolated for long periods of time, having no repairs of time and minimal light. Inside the business school, prison bars cover some of the windows on the outside of the building walls and a walk through the building reveals bars on the windows as well, some of which have been removed, the bar stumps still visible. There are still hidden clues remaining from the presence of the prisoners, such as engravings on the original breakwater wall. Inside the building, at the entrance of what is now the library, there are what seem to be engravings and preserved objects belonging to the convicts, such as a compass and a notebook, still clearly visible under the floor varnish.